celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. Now they use both the left and right sides of their brain to birth an enterprise. Nurture it with their creativity and make it sustainable with their acumen. Their close ones perhaps will never understand the ins and outs of their day-to-day -day work. This is the plight of a creative entrepreneur. Today, we bring you a whole host of them. Take a look. The Creative Entrepreneurs I am Justine Royal and I'm a music composer and a singer. Uh, I make music. I run a company of my own. I don't say to act cool, but I've, I'm a really stubborn person and my parents would be really happy because they've been calling me Dheet ever since. I remember playing at really sad birthday parties at gigs which had only 5% of the turnover, which included the managers, the organizers, and some of my drunken friends like, who would come anywhere for, for the free passes. Uh, the hardest part came where I moved to Bombay, which is not easy, and easy doesn't give you anecdotes. So I remember living in a small room with three people. Uh, I remember calling Karan Johar, Anurag Kashyap, Imtiaz Ali, my director Nitya Mehra, and Amit Ruedi, and Rehman still hasn't responded to my emails. <laughs> But a lot of people did meet me. I met Karan Johar. I, I uh, bagged a lot of projects because I kept cold calling people and I did not back off. I am a person who doesn't apply too much logic. If I set my mind to something, I just go for it. This is Ankur Jain, the founder and CEO of Bira91. Uh, we started out in a context where the choices for beers for consumers were uh, essentially uh, what I would call your dad's version of beer. And we said, urban millennials in India need something that they can call their own. And we created that, and uh, the brand quickly went viral. Uh, at one point in our small office in Zamrudpur, we were behind on rent by at least six months. But not just behind on rent by six months, we were behind on our electricity bill by three months. And so BSES came out and just cut our power off, and this was just three years ago. And we were a team of three people, including the office beyond. Uh, but we decided to not call it quits, and now we're a team of 300, a uh, roaring team of 300, growing. When the art fair started, uh, pretty much the same month that Lehman Brothers came crashing down, um, but if, if it wasn't for blissful oblivion and a bit of passion, um, maybe it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have started off. From knocking on people's doors, um, gallery to gallery, to bringing a community together, creating education, creating outreach programs, looking at public-private partnerships, bringing in corporate interest, to 10 years later today, uh, being joined by the world's largest art fair organizers, feel, take pride in the fact that you know, there is something that, is, that has been created that is of tremendous value to this country, but also something that has put this country in our industry really on the world map. Uh, my name is Vijay Nair. I'm a CEO of a company called OML. Uh, we largely dabble in the entertainment business. So I would say the first time probably I wanted to call it quits was right in between a concert when me and our co-founders were kind of lottery charged by a bunch of police officers because we asked them to stop selling tickets to our concerts in black. The second time I would have wanted to call it quits was again kind of um, an inspector kind of coming right outside a concert and holding a gun to my head to let their friends and family inside to concert free. We took years to kind of convince possibly the world's most popular comedian, Jerry Seinfeld, to come to India. Uh, a day before the concert, um, the license for the venue was cancelled because one officer decided that there was not enough parking in the venue, in the only venue in Bombay that actually has parking built inside it. Um, on the bright side, I got to stay at the fanciest presidential suite in the fanciest hotel because the hotel refused to refund the money. A couple of months ago, while trying to pull off a really large event, um, I recall wanting to really quit when the morning before a really big investment, big concert for us, the chief minister of the state called me personally to, sit, uh, to make me sit down and tell me that his spiritual advisor had a dream the night before that the concert was going to bid, uh, bring bad luck to the state. So he had to rethink our license. Uh, so why would you ever quit the entertainment uh, business when the business of entertainment itself is this entertaining? Now, um, a lot of other entrepreneurs, they judge that their success has been judged by the amount of money they raise um, by actually having other people invest in their dream. So I want to ask all of you, as creative entrepreneurs, what metrics do you all use to get other people to invest in your business? Is it different metrics from, say, uh, tech companies, 
Are they the same metrics? Neha, I want to start with you because you've actually got investment some months ago. Uh, getting the investment, I think, was the easiest part. Uh, the last 10 years were spent building, building a market, building a demand, and then once that got established, all we really had to do was ensure that we stick to best practice and a certain degree of quality standard that you know, we set up from the beginning and sustained. To Neha's point, I think anything that is consumer focused or anything that's creatively inclined uh, necessarily has to have that human component. I think at the end of the day is really about human beings loving your product and that's really what happened for us. So that was the first step and that's exactly what Neha said. Uh, the first 10 years was really about getting that uh, in place and once that happens, it's magic. So it seems money is damn easy. Once everything, <laughs> money comes in. We've been very fortunate. The first investor I ever met invested into the company in the first round. And the second investor I ever met in the second round invested money into the company. So we never did a roadshow. Uh, I started the company fairly young. So I didn't understand there's a concept that other people give you money to run your business. That was very alien to me. So I think it was only after getting a team which understood that entire process much better than I did. is the only reason we've been successful at doing it. Uh, so the success of us raising investments is because I keep away from it. Uh, and I let other people do it, it's just much easier. So you spoke about your team, and Jocelyn, I want to ask you, uh, as a creative entrepreneur, in a sense, marketing yourself and trying to build you know, this, this pool of other talented people with which to work, how do, you, how do you find gigs? How do you find assignments? For me, it's always been like more of a barter. There have been people who've, been, who've, who've given me a gear to make, make better music, or there are managers who just uh, get you on for a tour, and they give you a signing amount. And uh, you know, social media has been a lot of, of a lot of help. Like you put it out on YouTube, Facebook, and you promote it, market it out there. If the work is good, then it finds its own audience, I believe. It yeah. might be slow, but that's the way to go about it. Where do you find people to work in these creative industries? I, you know, engineering has a talent pipeline. They'll go to engineering school. They'll become IT engineers. We have it in banking. We have it in medicine. Do we have a talent pipeline in the creative industries? Well, for me, I'm an engineer. So engineers can be far more creative than we think they can be, <laughs> I guess. And uh, so a lot of our team, actually, uh, to make a point, is uh, not what I would call... Uh, traditionally skilled at what we are getting them to do. So it's, it's really finding great talent, N not great talent, I would say open minds that are willing to learn. I know you dropped out of college to start your business, so where do you look at for your pipeline? Probably the only smart thing I did. <laughs> um, first of all, I mean, uh, a big, uh, my, I'm the partner in my company and uh, is actually my brother, so I had to just go to the next room to find him. Uh, that wasn't so hard, and he kind of helped him, uh, helped me kind of really raise money and you know, structure the business. Uh, the other thing that I've realized is a good trick if you're running a creative business is to meet people in other sectors and convince them to quit what they're doing. I'm really good at convincing people that what they're doing absolutely sucks, which is why you should come and work with us. Um, but there's a huge, seriously speaking, there's a huge lack of any institutional way of doing this. We're actually starting our own uh, curriculum and university beginning next month. Uh, the idea is to kind of train about 40 to 50 people at a point of time, but maybe 300 people over a period of year. Uh, not just to kind of recruit for us, but recruit within our industry and for ecosystem. For the creative industry. I'm also actually struck by how um, so many other countries, like the UK, for example, has mapped its creative industries. Um, and in the UK, about 10% of the jobs come from the creative industries. Um, you know, and that I think, if I'm not mistaken, generate about 90 billion pounds in revenue. I'm just wondering if we really need to do some of this mapping as well within our country. And before we go into the mapping, I think the fundamental problem we have is everything that we do, and three of us actually do very different things within the industry itself. Uh, the government and the system kind of considers everything we do as luxury. And that's what really makes it so hard. And I think, you know, in the recent terms, in terms of um, bearing the brunt of that, in terms of uh, when GST kind of rolled out, is all of us are at 28%, right? We're in the highest percentage part of it. And that becomes when you kind of treat an entire industry which is as large as the creative industry like that, there is absolutely no way for the industry to scale up. I think the government is anti-fun. You know, this is such a new industry. So we have to look at it in a, in a framework that there are no policies. It isn't defined. It doesn't have mainstream representation in corporate forums, in government policy matters. So it is a matter of time. But the good news is that a bulk of the opportunities are ahead of us. 
Jaslene as an individual. Definitely there's this dearth of infrastructure, there's no grooming, there's no sh showcasing and proper, like proper way of doing it and like um, it's mostly crisis management rather than, you know, like doing things properly. Given all these challenges, um, you know, funding, regulation, all of this, what keeps you so involved? Just for my love for music and beer. For me, it's easy. I'm in the beer business. How hard can it be? I'm, I'm in the concert business, so I'm in the business of getting other people to drink beer. And Neha, you get people to buy art after they've drunk beer. So you just, you have a dream <laughs> and you just hold on really, really tight, right? Um, I think all of us have somehow, either we have invented the jobs that we're doing at this point of time or we have somehow kind of uh, found a way where what we love is exactly the work that we're doing right now. So once you're kind of in that place, it will take a lot to make you quit. I mean, everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. You know, it can't happen, but... So I think you need entrepreneurship skills and a you know, great sense of dark humor in that, uh, that can kind of help you sustain in this country as a creative entrepreneur. Thank you all. You can clap now. I would like to thank our sponsors. Seventh Young Turks Conclave is powered by Satyabama University, driven by Ford Mustang, wealth partner, Ask Group, luxury partner, Rado, Hospitality partner Andaz Delhi, India's first luxury lifestyle hotel and celebration partner Bira 91. Being educated, the moment you got certificates from university, you stop learning. But I am aware I am uneducated, that's why I am learning, learning, learning every moment till my death. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks.